Hi, hi, iPad. <laughs> If I know your name. <laughs> hi, Kavya. Hi, how are you? <clears throat> that's great, that's great. Hi, hi, Manika. How are you doing? Hi, Rahma. Okay. Hi, ma'am. Okay, how are you? Reham, okay, fine, Reham. <laughs> okay, great, that's great. Okay, Walaikum Aslam Kamal, I hope you are doing great. That's good, that's good. Okay, hi, Uruj. Shaima, how are you? <laughs> I hope you have learned from last session here. Hmm? Yes, a lot, a doctor. Okay, okay, that's great. Okay, keep practicing. Part three will only, uh, you will get better by the end of your, you know, the thorough practice, okay? But otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter that, you know, how much material do we have, how much are we getting, you know, from here and there. Until unless we will speak, we are not going to be good, okay? So just practice with heart, all right? Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So guys, today we are going to cover an other important Uh, you know the module for this part three so today is like a mid six session um with this prep hour which i conduct every friday at this the same hour uh 12 pm gmt so today we are going to cover the management of labor and delivery module i hope you guys are getting uh you know the benefited out of this and i hope you know this is uh something you know which is helping you in your preparation okay so i'll be very happy if you guys you know the raise any concern if you guys you know the ask me any question So I will be happily, you know, the answering all of you, and we'll try to, uh, you know, the answer with the best of my knowledge. Okay. So let's get started because time is short, and today I have to discuss a very important scenario with all of you. So let's discuss that how this management of labor and delivery module is going to be managed. Okay. So first we will cover management of labor. So how we are going to deal with this module is that first of all, of course. information gathering communication with patients and families of course communication with colleagues and patient safety applied clinical knowledge everything will come yeah so all you have to do is that you know it's not like that you know in every module uh, you know the every um, domain is going to be tested but some of the time many domains will overlap and many domains you need uh, to you know the focus on like in this management of labor of course you have to have a good thorough knowledge of complete you know the um, uh, almost kind of the modules because you will incorporate so many modules into this module so you have to have uh, ability to review the reports for relevant information that may influence in postpartum care including the pathograph ctg fetal and tocardiographic monitoring know when to initiate investigations and interpret them as well so of course this is very basics and this is what we all do of course this is all we'll be doing in exam as well communication with patients and families able to ensure that the patient and the family are well informed about the course of labor and any intervention as well including their benefits and risks so you have to have knowledge that how you are going to um, uh, you know the convey your um, knowledge in the layman terminologies always remember okay labor and delivery module is going to be a very sensitive module of course okay because you know woman is going to be in labor or woman wants to discuss her uh, you know the mode of delivery time of delivery or woman is like i mean um, you know by you know that she is a known case of any medical disorder and we have to decide that when and how she is going to be delivered so communication with colleagues is also important you have to have a knowledge that when to stop in your uh, you know the a uh, treatment option then you have to involve your colleagues senior and juniors and from other specialties as well in the care of labor you have to have a basic knowledge to able to prioritize cases on the labor ward including delegation of tasks able to teach the procedures like instrumental delivery like we do in our teaching sessions as well okay episode means tears dish delivery cesarean section patient safety is also very much important why because you have to understand all aspect of patient safety in labor where to deliver is it a low risk woman or is it a high risk woman is it a low risk woman then when where when and where she is going to be delivered when you are going to offer her pain relief and what pain relief is appropriate in terms of you know the different setting because by rule we all know that epidural is not going to be provided in the midwifery led unit 
rather it is only be available at consultant led care unit okay so this is very much important that you have to have this knowledge of course you don't i mean say falls things in uh, you know the exam which you don't know okay or if you are going to uh, you know be like i mean kind of promising that okay okay we are going to provide you you know the good pain relief in the form of epidural but what patient is delivering in the midwifery led unit so this is not going to be a good uh, you know the idea that you know uh, you have to say this then you know the fetal heart rate tracing this is very much important okay so this is very much important that how you are going to demonstrate you know the evidence based knowledge in the form of guidelines protocols and when you are going to make decisions about care of patients so all together in terms of management of labor you know what type of question comes in exam number one most importantly um, a patient has had you know the third degree fourth degree perineal tear and now she wants to discuss her mode of labor patient is twin uh, you know the gestation be it you know the any any form of multiple gestation for example she is monoamniotic mono uh, chorionic for example she is uh, you know dichorionic monoamniotic okay whatever so she wants to discuss about her mode of delivery for example her first twin is breech but she wants vaginal delivery so of course this is going to be your communication uh, you know the kind of exam that how you tell her that you know this is not feasible in this case yeah so i mean of course this will bring a lot of negotiation this will bring a lot of communication so what you need is you need this patience you need to listen to the patient okay you need to be very good listener and an active listener as well unless you are active listener trust me you are not going to get very good chance to pass this exam okay because sometimes if we are you know the going here and there we are detracting so sometimes you know the role player gives us cues as well so try to get those cues okay try to get them in terms of labor very much sensitive module yeah for example you know you have been called by the midwife that okay she cannot deliver uh, you know the vaginally and now we have to make a decision for you know the any we have to expedite delivery by any means for example if it is operative vaginal delivery for example if it is cesarean infection so then how you are going to take the information for example we want to deliver this woman by you know the instrumental vaginal delivery but she doesn't agree for that so how you are going to give information how you are going to take information how you are going to communicate this is again going to be a big challenge one important thing in the laboring woman always remember never you know give so much of information when a woman is panting with labor pains okay give her time to recover from one labor pain to the other labor pain and then give you know all of the information in between uh, you know when she is relaxed when she is able to listen to you plus in the form of consent as well don't try to take consent when she is laboring okay there is a very beautiful video on strategy if uh, uh, i'm sure you must have seen that if not then you know uh, take subscription of strategy and do watch that okay so i mean they do have a very good example of how you have to take you know the consent in the laboring woman how you are going to counsel her how you have to you know tell her that okay what to do and what not to do ultimately we have to do the autonomy we have to respect the patient's wishes but at least you have to have you know this much of knowledge this much of communication to convince somebody that okay this is not good for you and uh, you know this might harm you and your baby in the end as well of course so we have to be very open and honest about all these things in terms of communication of colleague you have to able to work with colleagues to effect you know a safe delivery you have to able to understand and demonstrate involvement of entity in the delivery especially operative vaginal delivery of course you need staff you can't do it alone you need you know some of your you know the colleagues to be with you sometimes if there is any complication for example if it is ph ph you can rupture inversion collapse fetal distress so of course you need you know your support you need your team so how you are going to you know um, triage them how you are going to you know give them responsibility this is your job okay so at least you have to have this knowledge again you know the patient safety is a prime importance over there that you know when and where patient is going to deliver for example patient has you know the high head and we want to do instrumental delivery so what is going to be the you know the proper safe environment where we can do that so of course this is your you know this is your job that in the lines of guidelines how you are going to apply that guideline in terms of patient safety and applied clinical knowledge as well 
so there are going to be multiple things which are going to incorporate with one another okay so this is a job of a good candidate or i must say a prepared candidate okay prepared candidate for this exam because we do prepare you know for this exam isn't it so this is your job that you know you have to look at you know the station by all aspects don't just read in between the line don't just think that okay i have seen this scenario somewhere i have done this scenario with you know the one mentor or i have discussed with this you know one of my fellow colleagues no whatever is given in front of you is your session okay so you just have to talk about that always remember that in all you know the stations what you have to focus on number 1 what domains are being tested number 2 what is your task so if you are not going to fulfill your task trust me you will be in danger okay because at the end this is your exam and at the end you have to fulfill your task okay so don't just think that sometimes what happens is that you know when a candidate comes out of you know the exam hall so he or she says oh i have done it you know the brilliantly i i said this i said this because i have read that in in my you know the guideline i have read that i have discussed it you know somewhere here and there but maybe you know he or she hasn't fulfilled the demand of that particular station you didn't fulfill the task and when we see the result and somehow you know we get upset we we do say that okay no 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 in, in according to me i was you know okay i did you know perform each and everything but please 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 when you see the station do try to read you know everything on that okay what is the task what what is the domain tests first of all what is the you know the scenario and then what is your task those three lines in the end are very much important in almost every station because that is your actual exam in the line of given scenario okay so again let me summarize for this labor and delivery module few things are very much important you have to have basic applied clinical knowledge okay almost all important guidelines like feedback guideline is very much important aph pph okay was a previa placenta previa very much important abruption how you are going to deal okay any obstetrical emergency this is very much important then comes of course resuscitation neonatal resuscitation maternal resuscitation very much important so these guidelines should be on your tips i tell it to all of my students that you know green top guidelines are very much important while you are covering you know all these stations because you know the many of the important guidelines are there the back instrumental vaginal delivery breach yeah in breach of course you have to talk about because there are you know the plenty of scenarios in which a woman will come to you and she will tell you i have my birth plan with me and i really want to discuss and while you see while you go through her notes you find out that is a breach and she is primary para but she wants vaginal delivery so how you negotiate how you bring your uh, the guideline knowledge into that that is your you know the actual exam okay in terms of prioritization you have to have good knowledge that you know that at what level i have to involve and how to prioritize okay today we are going to do a prioritization session as well okay and i took this session from one of the practice books but it is very good so let's see how we are going to discuss is everything clear everyone any question any question guys no thank you oh, hi salma how are you Oh, fine thank you how are you i'm good alhamdulillah that's great that's great reham is it okay is it everything everything clear hmm okay that's great so who wants to present to me i would encourage you know the candidate who have never presented to me so it's going to be a good idea yeah कैन Uh, you know the one uh, slide okay 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 
Okay. So this is your visit. I will give you almost three minutes, sweetheart. Okay. So you have okay. to ask me once you finish your uh, one slide. You will ask me for the other, then the other. So you will take three minutes. Okay. 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 Fine. Your time starts now. Everybody, all of you, please, uh, you know, listen to her carefully. Try to solve this question carefully. Okay. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. Mind it, I have eight rooms, yeah? Okay. Next. Can I see the back slide? Uh -huh, sure. Do you need further information? Do you need further time? Uh, no. Okay, fine. So let's start. Mm -hmm. so now you have to perform your task in 10 minutes time. Okay? Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Hello, I'm Sadia, one of the exam candidate. I go through the labor ward. I'm ready to take the over with my team. And uh, I will prioritize the patient, the urgent, semi-urgent, non-urgent patient. And uh, my priority can be changed according to the uh, further information. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will uh, review the patient notes before that, make sure that the patient is not uh, having any drug allergy, any Jehovah Witness, or any high-risk medical condition, which she, patient needs any additional uh, care. Mm -hmm. So in this case, in labor ward, I have the eight pa uh, patient and my priority is room number one and room number five. And here I will go myself to assess this patient. And in the room number one, the patient is having a post cesarean section delivered at 1 a.m. due to the preeclampsia. And she has the estimated blood levels of 800 ml. I want to know about the current condition of the patient, about the MUOS chart, what are her observation, her uh, uh, intake output, and uh, especially her blood pressure. 
and also the uh, uterus is contracted, how is the hormone and any per vaginal bleeding? May I know the findings? Okay, what you want? Uh, her observations, blood pressure, pulse temperature, and uterus is contracted, and what are the pervaginal findings? At the moment, no findings are available. So if the patient is widely stable, and uh, then the, my uh, anesthesia doctor will be uh, look after this patient, and uh, uh, I will concern regarding the sign and symptom of impending eclampsia. But if the patient is stable, then her uh, she her, uh, she will be monitored on the Mayo's chart and uh, keep her well hydrated, mobilized, and also make sure that she is having the antihypertensive. If the blood pressure is raised, and if the sign and symptoms of impending eclampsia, we give her the magnesium sulfate and uh, encourage her to breastfeed and assess this patient for the DVT prophylaxis. And if the patient is hemodynamically unstable and she is still bleeding, then I will review this patient to be uh, assessed that is there. Uh, and uh, according to that, I will manage this patient. All right, next. Next uh, is the my patient is room number five where the patient, can I go? Yes, next sure. slide. The uh, room number five, the, the way the patient is having the meconium and the fully dilated. So I want to know more about this patient, about the history. So uh, that uh, from how long she is fully dilated, and what is her obstetric history, any uh, review her notes, and do the abdominal examination to assess her uterine contraction per abdominal uh, uh, head palpation. And uh, then assess uh, about the, her CTG. If the CTG is normal, uh, then uh, we will assess this uh, patient uh, as a continuous fetal heart rate monitoring. And uh, then uh, uh, if we have any concern regarding the CTG, then we will um, uh, expedite the delivery. But if the CTG is normal, then we will um, monitor her fetal heart rate continuously and uh, monitor her labor. Mm -hmm. And um, we make sure that beta tension will be available at the time of delivery and active management of the third stage of the labor. Uh, and okay. you will allocate? Uh, the midwife will uh, see this patient if he have any concern regarding the fetal heart rate or the progress of the labor, she will come back to me and report back to me. And uh, then uh, I will go uh, to the room number uh, six where the patient has a, a previous one cesarean section. And uh, uh, my main concern is here uh, the uterine rupture and the, um, uh, why she has the fetal heart rate, uh, fetal blood sampling. So I will review her notes, do the exam, uh, check that what is the indication for the previous cesarean section. And uh, then I will see that uh, from how long she is in the labor, what is the uterine contraction, any scar tenderness, and what is the CTG of this patient and per um, vaginal examination for this patient. If the CTG is normal, there is no concern regarding the scar tenderness. And uh, then uh, uh, we will monitor her uh, uh, fetal heart rate continuously and uh, her progress of labor. And if we don't have any concern, the midwife uh, look after this patient. And if we have any concern regarding the fetal heart uh, uh, rate, uh, we will repeat the fetal heart sampling uh, according to uh, the protocol. And uh, if it's the uh, pathological, we will expedite the delivery according to the Bishop score. If it's unfavorable, we'll do for the physician section. If it is favorable, she then is we will do at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah, six a.m. Uh, she is at three a.m. at six a.m. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if she is the at the moment, is, her liker is clear, okay, and she is mm -hmm. not a person on, and she's six centimeter. What she will do? Yeah, if the uh, I will monitor her CTG. If CTG is uh, okay, then we will uh, um, progress of the labor will be monitored on the partogram. And uh, uh, if we have any concern regarding the fetal heart rate, then we'll expedite the delivery by doing the emergency cesarean section mm -hmm. by category um, two. Okay, fine. Okay, then I will go room by room. Mm -hmm. Can I go to the first? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a patient uh, where a second case where the patient is uh, gravida 2. She has a, a seven centimeter dilated at 3 m, has in the meconium. So I want to know about her uh, uh, history and uh, to know that how many, uh, from how long she is in the labor. What are the abdominal findings about the uterine contraction and CTG finding of this patient? 
and uh, pervaginal I, I will say my midwife to be assess this patient and do the pervaginal examination how is the labor is going there 7:30 she will report back to me if she has any concern regarding mm -hmm. her uh, uh, fetal heart rate and the progress of the labor and according to that we will um, uh, uh, manage and we make sure that the pediatrician will be available at the time of delivery of this patient so your if we have any yeah if she uh, yeah yeah if the uh, ctg is normal and uh, she has mm -hmm. a Um, um, normal progress. There is no concern regarding her bishop after uh, now. So uh, the midwife will lay, take over this patient, okay, and fine. make sure the pediatrician will be available at the time of delivery. Mm -hmm. Then the room number three with an undiagnosed breach with a labor at four centimeter. So I will go and assess this patient, and uh, uh, then uh, what are the risks for this patient, and also. Uh, do the fetal heart rate uh, what is the ctg of this patient and then i will counsel the patient regarding the uh, um, mode of delivery and discuss with her about the uh, um, vaginal uh, breech delivery versus the emergency cesarean section and tell her the pros and cons and whatever patient uh, decide or choose we will uh, uh, encourage her the preference uh, evidence or research says that uh, emergency cesarean section is a good option for the baby so if she is ready for the cesarean section we will take the written informed consent save the iv line cross match who checklist for this patient and, uh, and inform the anesthesia team and uh, say the patient not to be uh, eat and drink and uh, prepare for the emergency cesarean section but if it is she is ready for the operative uh, that pre vaginal delivery then we will tell the pros and cons and discuss with my consultant rule out the intercontic and the indication contraindication for the breech delivery and uh, then we will proceed for the vaginal delivery okay and, and make sure that the patient will be Uh, for the monitoring, uh, the midwife will monitor her continuous fetal heart rate monitoring, and if she has any concern regarding the uh, fetal heart or the progress of the labor, then she report back to me. At the time of delivery, me or my consultant will be go there to deliver the breech. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the room number four is a preterm delivery. Uh, my main concern is patient has twenty eight weeks. She has abdominal pain. I will send to my ST one to take the history examination. my main concern is the preterm labor versus the uterine abruption or uh, the uti so she will uh, take the history detail history from the patient about about her pregnancy any risk factor and uh, then uh, she will ask about the abdominal pain is a continuous or intermittent and how is the baby movement and when was the last scan and uh, then do the per abdominal examination to assess the uterine size uterine contraction and uh, if uh, the patient is in labor do the per speculum examination uh, with her permission to see the uterine uh, cervical dilatation and uh, also uh, if there any uh, pulling of the uh, fluid to see the pre prom uh, to rule out the pre prom if the patient is in the preterm labor then he will be managed as a preterm labor protocol according to the local unit uh, we will uh, counsel the patient regarding this and uh, uh, give the steroid cover and if the delivery is imminent then we will give her the magnesium sulfate for the neuro protection steroid cover and uh, if she is in the labor uh, then we will give her also the uh, gbs prophylaxis uh, iv antibiotic And make sure the pediatrician will be involved, and uh, we will uh, NICU bed is available, uh, so the patient might be need the baby might be needed admission in the neonatal nursery. And uh, yeah, so if uh, 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 if the NICU yeah, for the sake of the steroid, we can tocolize this patient, and we will counsel this uh, with the patient this thing. Then the room number five, where the patient is fully dilated and meconium from the last uh, one and a half hour, and she is primarily gravida. I want to know about her uh, uh, labor pains and also she has any epidural, and how is the her uh, uterine contraction and uh, abdominal findings? What is the estimated fetal weight, uterine contraction, and head appeal palpable? And then per vaginal examination uh, to see that. Uh, Uh, what is the station and position of the baby and any scapet or molding? 
and uh, the CTG finding of this patient. If the CTG is normal, then we will uh, check for the progress of the labor further and the midwife will monitor her. Uh, for one half or more. If the delivery is not imminent or we have any concern regarding the CTG, then we expedite the delivery by the operative vaginal delivery and I will go. If the, uh, the no concern regarding the fetal heart rate, then uh, we will uh, see uh, according to the local interpartum care. I monitor her labor normally. Okay. After two hours completion, if she is not delivered, then we will do the operative vaginal delivery according to the bishop's score is if it is favorable. If it's not favorable, then we will proceed for the emergency situation. Then the room number seven, where the patient is uh, uh, tabbed to for the admission for the elective cesarean section, the midwife will go there and she will apologize for the delay and uh, take the uh, IV line and say, uh, send the uh, pre-op investigation, blood group, cross match and complete blood count. And after uh, free from the emergency, the my ST1 go and take the uh, permission for the elective cesarean section. And meanwhile, we will also see that any, how is her baby movements and her fetal heart rate, any concern, uh, the midwife will ask and we will assess this patient later on. Then the room number eight, uh, where the patient is postnatal and she is delivering and waiting for the suturing. So I will send my midwife to see this patient to check that uh, uh, how is uh, she, her um, observation and how uterus is contracted, any pervaginal bleeding, any tear. And then she will, uh, if she is sure, then they will suture this uh, episiotomy. And uh, uh, make sure that active management of third stage of labor is done and placenta is delivered completely. So my yes, your priority. Yeah, so my priority for this uh, this is a uh, room number one. Uh, if she's stable, then the room number six, and uh, then room number five. So you are changing your priority. Earlier you said your priority is room number one and five. Now you are taking six as well. Oh, no, no, sorry. Room number one and five, and uh, six depends upon her. Uh, 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 fetal heart is if it's uh, uh, abnormal, then it will be also urgent. Okay, fine. So in two priority, if the patient, both patients are unstable and uh, for I will go for the mother in the room number one or my consultant will go there and room number five, I will handle. Okay, in which, which cases you want to involve your consultant? Uh, if the room number one is unstable and I'm suspecting intra-abdominal bleed, then mm -hmm. my consultant will be there. Otherwise, the senior anesthetist will be checked this patient if she is unstable due to the high blood pressure uh, through the preeclampsia or impending eclampsia. LSCS has already been done at one o'clock at night, okay? And mm -hmm. because of the preeclampsia toxemia, estimated blood loss at that time was 800 ml. Would you still like to involve your consultant in this woman or would you like somebody to do any kind of um, monitoring or something? The, uh, have now, you seven hours has been elapsed till mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get any further information. Uh, if her mm -hmm. MUOS chart is stable, her blood pressure is okay, then she will be monitored as a routine post-op care. If she mm -hmm. is widely unstable and she is still bleeding, then I will involve my consultant. If we, uh, my concern is on only the preeclampsia or she has sign of impending eclampsia, then anesthesia uh, uh, as, uh, registrar will see this patient with a midwife. Okay. So one, five, and six are your urgent priority, right? Yeah. yeah. And priority can be changed according to the further information and finding of the patient. Hmm. Almost information is already given. Okay, so keeping in view that you know all these information are there, so how would you you know deprioritize and whom would you allocate? So you said that in room number one and room number five you will go yourself, and uh, in your room number five a midwife will also be with you. In room number one, obstetric anesthetist will be with you. In room number uh, two, midwife. In room number three, midwife. Uh, room number four. In room number three, midwife. I will go to be counsel this patient and assess this patient. Okay. For room number three, this is for a yeah. yeah. 
And room number four, the ST one will go and assess this patient and do the yes, protocol for yes. preterm labor if she is yes, in pre labor. labor. And in room number seven, also ST one will go and room number eight will go. Okay. Yeah, I'm yes. free from this. Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, so Sadia, how do you feel about it? Yeah. I was expecting further information from you. That's why if it's not, then I think I will go with this information and manage the patient. Don't wait for the further information. Okay. So, I mean, uh, if, if somebody has had cesarean section at one o'clock at night and now uh, she has been given to you in the form of, uh, you know, the post-operative care patient. So, of course, the baby is in NICU, okay, and patient has bled at that time, it will have done well. So what is what you need in this moment? Monitoring, okay? And yeah. first of all, you have to check that where woman is at the moment. Is she in HDU or is she in you know the ICU? Okay. Then you will mm -hmm. simply say that you know I would like to inquire about her current blood pressure. You are not going to you know the or you can say that you know can I have further information? So if examination examiner says no, I don't have. So then you have to manage. Okay. Simply you will say that you know I would like to know that what are her current observation at present. Is she having any sign and symptoms of eclampsia? Because postpartum eclampsia is very much uh, common uh, in, mm -hmm. in such patients. Plus, I would like to know that whether she has had any primary PPH or no afterwards, and what are uh, how is she at the moment? So I would like to go through her observation first, and then my management is going to be accordingly. Meanwhile, I will ask my midwife to have a look at her, uh, you know, the bloods. You need mm -hmm. bloods, right? You need what? Yeah. You need full blood count, okay? You need, you know, the liver function test. You need urea tract electrolytes, okay? And you need, you know, the coagulation profile as well, isn't it? You want yeah. to know about that, you know, why she has blood 800 ml. Preclamsia toxemia, until unless platelet count is so low, until unless she is developing help, then, you know, only we can expect, okay? Although, mm -hmm. you know, the loss is okay, but still we have to be very careful because since this is a case of preclamsia, Toxemia. So in here, you can simply say that because seven hours have been elapsed and so far I didn't get any you know, the further information. So I can see that patient is stable at the moment. So obstetric anesthetist will continue the monitoring. I will ask him to inform me where, wherever if there is any, uh, you know, the need or any, any further, you know, the uh, need arises for any uh, further intervention. Uh, okay, so do you think still it is your priority? No, if this is on this information, it is not a, it's a semi urgent case, and no, and only the observation is needed for this patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not it's not priority. Okay, mm -hmm. always always think of so many things when you are seeing. Okay, the patient has mm -hmm. delivered seven and a half hours ago. Okay, so of course, if there was any kind of concern, so you would have been having you know the further information over here. Plus, don't forget baby. Then you can simply say that, you know, I will ask midwife or I will uh, ask ST1 after managing this labor board that uh, inquire about the baby as well, how the baby is doing in the new. Okay? Because whatever is given in front of you, you have to address almost, you know, this all information. In the mm -hmm. second case, you know, I can, okay, uh, now let us let me tell you that how you are going to start with this labor board. Okay. Labor board is quite easy. If you take it, you know, a very, uh, you know, the look, close look at, you know, the all cases. Pick your urgent cases, where you need intervention, where you are going to place yourself, where you are going to involve your consultant, okay? Doesn't matter if you have said so many things into you know, the one scenario, but if you haven't involved your consultant or if you haven't you know, the involved any of the, you know, the colleague which is important in that, so the situation is going to be almost zero, okay? Doesn't matter, you know, how much you speak. So first of all, you have said that I have been given this labor board to prioritize and I have my team with me, okay? So first of all, what I'll be doing is that I'll be taking a aerial view and I will check that how many um, the patients I do have, then I will prioritize. Always go room by room. Sadia, this is my humble advice to you. Always go room by room. You quickly jumped when you started off your station. You said my first priority is room number one and room number five. So from room number one to room number five, even, you know, I had to juggle, you know, um, you know, here and there. All right. So always go, this is my suggestion that always go room by room. So this way, you know, you can pick and then you can simply say that I will uh, go room by room and then I will prioritize and allocate my team members. I can change my priority if I see any urgent, uh, you know, the case coming along in the 
next rounds because in okay. the recent exam in february exam uh, you know the candidates had 13 you know the rooms and out of those 13 rooms although the four, five six cases were you know the rooms were empty but at least you have to have an idea that you know why they are empty and in some cases you know it was written that uh, you know the patient is about to arrive patient is due to arrive she has had cord prolapse midwife got a call from the midwifery led unit that okay a patient is on the way so of course if you will manage you know one by one then when if you will go to the room number 5 6 and you see that cord prolapse is there then you can quickly you know add over there that okay i can see that cord prolapse is arriving so i will immediately shift my focus to the cord prolapse once she comes because i have this is an obstetrical emergency and that needs to be dealt on priority basis and i'm sure you know in that labor board apart from cord prolapse there is not going to be any other further emergency urgent case is what urgent case is where you have to save the woman where you have to save the baby okay woman in terms of if she is bleeding if she is having mm-hmm. rupture if she is having aph if she is having pph if she is having or in terms of fetus if there is pathological ctg if there is fps which is pathological if there is uh, you know the um, uh, what if there is you know the cord prolapse okay along with pathological ctg or if there is scar rupture pph aph so almost all those cases are going to be your they need to save the lives those are important okay so those are urgent cases so if you will have a you know the close look at this labor board sadia let's let's take a look she is you know the para th- grab the third para 2 plus 0 and she is full term plus 9 weeks at the moment her meconium strain like a epidural given she is on centocinon at 3 o'clock she was 7 cm she is no risk mid in the mid with the late care unit but what you will do in this case what you will do in this case hmm? in that while you're already taking care of this patient so you will ask her so what you will say that okay this looks to me that she is mm-hmm. grab the third and she is post term and at the moment her meconium she is having meconium stent like her epidural has been cited and oxytocin is given at 3 o'clock she was 7 cm and now it is uh, 8:30 so i will ask midwife for current you know the findings i will ask her that what is her current ctg i will ask her what is her current findings and then i will uh, uh, go to this woman after dealing with my rest of the patient because this needs you know urgent attention plus i will also involve my consultant in this case as well because i might need to do fps or i might need i might need to do further in, uh, intervention in the line of fps then this case this is primary para she is 39 plus 0 at the moment her current you know the membranes are intact she is not on epidural she is not on oxytocin because she is just arrived and she is undiagnosed breach and she is in spontaneous labor 4 cm at 7:30 it means only 1 hour has been gone by okay you are taking over at 8:30 so what you will do in this case you will say since it is undiagnosed breach and she is in spontaneous labor she arrived at 7:30 so i would like to know about her uh, i would like to review her record plus i would like to counsel her uh, i would like to see whether she has any birth plan with her then i would like to see the breach position of the breach then i would like to see the mode of delivery keeping in view of her birth wish uh, the birth plan keeping in view of her findings at the moment the station as well plus the ctg i will offer her cesarean section consent i will ask one of the midwife to monitor this woman and uh, do the iv line group and save and anesthetics for the review as well because if it is undiagnosed breach because th- that is fairly common 20% isn't it so it can yeah. be there so this is how you are going to because you then you can you know justify yourself since it is only one hour that she is with us 7:30 to 8:30 so i can go back to this woman once the uh, midwife has taken all the measures what i have advised her i will ask her to just inform me if, if any concern arises then i will go to room number 4 this is also primary para 28 plus 4 and she is waiting for the doctor to see and she is here with the abdominal pain and ctg is normal and midwife is taking care of her so what you will do in this case you said that you know uh, abdominal pain is abruption every abdominal pain is abruption no no my concern is abruption and preterm labor two or dds See, you know, always be careful when you open your sentence for every, you know, the case. So this looks, you know, you can simply take it as a preterm labor. Okay, you can simply say that I can see that uh, she is 28 plus four weeks and she is here with the abdominal pain and at the moment midwife has done CTG because midwife is already taking care of you know the patient. 
midwife has done CTG, which which is normal. So I will advise one of my the uh, ST one one of uh, you know uh, not one of my I will ask ST one to go to review her record history examination because if it is the case of preterm labor then we have to manage according to the you know, protocol or if it is or if there is any uh, according to the per abdominal and perivaginal finding if she is in advanced labor then we have to involve the dietitian then we have to involve NICU then we have to see the uh, facilities NICU facilities as well and if at all she is in advanced labor or if we don't have any NICU facility then we have to arrange what in utero transfer okay <laughs> Then you can say that, you know, then patient will be managed in the lines of the preterm labor according to the unit protocol. Uh, at the moment, I will ask uh, midwife to continue the observation. I will ask ST1 to go. And once he is done with the, you know, the rest of the cases, he will go to this and he will take history and he will inform me. Okay. Then you will say that, yes, I will involve my consultant as well in this later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. the question number, room number five is, she is 41 plus, meconium draining. Okay. Epidural has been given. She is fully seven o'clock, and now it is eight thirty. One and a half hour. Primary para. If epidural is given, in how many hours patient has to deliver? Three hours. Okay, three hours. So you still have got time, isn't it? One thirty hours. You still have got one thirty hours. Okay. So she has mm -hmm. epidural. So how you are going to justify? I can see this is this is primary para. And she was fully at seven o'clock in the morning, and now it is eight thirty. So I will ask the midwife coordinator because senior midwife is also with you, isn't it? If, if I'm not wrong, yes, midwife in charge. Okay, or you can say that midwife coordinator. Okay, so you will say I will ask mid midwife coordinator because she is draining meconium. So I would advise midwife coordinator to go and see this woman to have a keen look at the CTG and tell me plus the color of the meconium as well and assess her. Because uh, she still can take one and, and a half hour more. And meanwhile, I will manage the rest of the labor ward. And then I will go to this woman. And then I will see that how she is going to be delivered. Okay. Meanwhile, I will ask her to review CTG, involve pediatrician as well. Or if there is any urge to push, then midwife coordinator can deal with that. And I will ask her to inform me if any concern arises. Now, this is important. Grab the tool. She is in second, you know, the term plus two days. Claire Liker, she is not an epidural, no syntocinone, but she was on trial of SCAR. Okay, ARM done at three o'clock, FPS done at six o'clock, which is 7.29. What is this? Normal. Normal. Hmm? Normal. Normal. And she was six centimeter at six o'clock. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay. So she is you know, the six centimeter at six o'clock. And now after two and a half hour, now it is 8.30 and two and a half hour has gone by. So what you need in this case, what you need, you need CTG because if it is rupture, if it is impending rupture, what you need? Because the heart rate abnormalities are going to be there, okay? So in this case, you can you will say that I can see that this is a woman who is taking a trial of SCAR and at three o'clock ARM has been done and FPS ARM ARM has been done and FPS has been done at six o'clock, which seems to be normal. Okay, seven point. This is not normal even. You know, seven point two nine is what normal. Okay. Normal. More than seven. Yes. Normal. So, yes. Yes. So what you will see that I can see that her ARM was done. So this should be your, you know, the main concern. That why three o'clock ARM was done and FPS was performed at six o'clock. So you will say that because this patient is taking trial of SCAR and I would like to see since how long she is in labor. Plus I would like to review her CTG as well. Then I would like to do her fetal heart rate, her contraction. I will exclude any unusual pain. I will do her per abdominal examination. For this woman, I would like to go myself and I would like to assess this woman myself. Okay, so this needs urgent review, isn't it? This needs urgent review. Because since six o'clock, you know, three o'clock ARM has been done and now it's 30, five and a half hour. And at six o'clock, she was six centimeters. She needs urgent review, isn't it, Sadia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see if we make it as an urgent, you know, the case. 
so what what next then you will say that i will go to the room number 7 i can see this is grab the 3 she is 39 plus 0 in tax membranes and she is not an epidural and she is routine case for elective lower cervical resection so nothing so what you will do in this case you will say because she is here to uh, for admission for the elective lower segment cesarean section so i will ask st1 to go to this woman uh, after managing the rest of the rooms i will ask him to go and uh, take consent and take bloods and take the necessary measures for the elective lower segment cesarean section that's it no need to do any other thing then room number 8 this is 39 plus 6 and this seems to be delivered and she is awaiting suturing so i will ask midwife to check if there is any ongoing loss i will ask her to Uh, tell me about her current observation if her uh, if she is having any any query she will tell me and then i will ask the senior midwife coordinator to go to this woman and do the stitching or i will go myself you know mm-hmm. later on but after managing all my case okay you don't have to uh, sweetheart you don't have to tell stories in every station and you don't have to make you know the stories that if it is posterior pool of the lacer is full then i will do the p prom then I, if you want to go in that direction trust me you will be lost okay <laughs> you will be lost because you know then you know examiner will also be kind of lost <laughs> and you will yourself will also be lost as well okay then you can say that you know uh, then you know this is abdominal pain yes i do agree that this is preterm labor but don't bring so much of extra information in this if time allows in the end you can while you are going to you know the prioritize your cases so um, according to this what is the priority number uh, that you know the uh, trial of scar woman isn't it yes. and what is the next priority which part meconium Room and number three, isn't it? Undiagnosed breach. Mm-hmm. Room it? number three, undiagnosed breach. Undiagnosed breach. Okay, and she is in four centimeter, and you know, undiagnosed breach. So after dealing with that, you will go to this plus to which which case you would like to inform your consultant, and which case you can handle yourself because you are ST five at the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Room number three. Because okay, very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Room number three. And, and, Room number two, where the meconium is there, and room, room number six. six. Okay, room number six, room number three, and, and uh, yes, room number two. Later on, you will involve your consultant, isn't it? Yes. So two and five. This is how this is how you will allocate all of your you know the uh, staff what is with you colleagues. St. One, you have managed him you know very proper way. A fifth year specialist anesthetic. Okay, you have allocated in the room number. One, you know the one. Okay, you have allocated in group number one. So, and after that, you had you know the six midwife midwife in charge. You have one. Then these can suture episiotomy, BK on and NN. So you can send you know any of the midwife to suture the episiotomy in the last case. Okay, AR, PK, and MK can insert IV line. And midwife is a MW is a midwife in the alongside midwife related. okay you can even bring this point as well that okay i will ask one of the midwife and then go to the room number 6 and suture the episode mm-hmm. okay with me are you with me hmm? yes okay so you know cut cut your sentences don't unnecessary you know the bring information simply you can say that you know i will go room by room and i will prioritize and i will manage the cases accordingly i will allocate at the same time i can change my priority if i find any urgent case coming along in the next of my uh, you know the rooms okay there is no hard and fast rule nobody is going to you know say anything to you but always remember where you have to inform your consultant where you have to you know the allocate and how you are going to prioritize this is very much important Okay, Sanjay. Mm-hmm. One um, one question. So here yes, there are two urgent cases. So will I ask my consultant to come because uh, if I'm going for the uh, cesarean section for undiagnosed breach, then the trial of labor is uh, might also need the emergency cesarean section. You are going to uh, you are going to say that I'm going to you know the inform my consultant that we have these two. Uh, you are not going to ask him to come. He will come himself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you will come. Of course, you know he knows his responsibility. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes some words are important, so that's why I was asking. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Okay, so you know this. This is how 
if you are going to say that okay i will inform my consultant so examiner will definitely know that you know what your limitation is and you know mm-hmm. where you are going to involve your consultant isn't it yes mm-hmm. exactly thank you okay 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 that's great that's great mm. for case number 5 do we need to assess her contract of course of course of course we do we have to do everything so you are going to involve in room number 5 what is room number 5 you are sending senior midwife and senior midwife knows much more labor than you <laughs> okay because almost all labor wards are you know and uh, you know the managed and uh, almost all low risk deliveries are conducted by midwives okay um, okay okay great i guess if ctg is not normal then proceed to fps in case five you can manage you can justify but don't forget to justify okay you can do whatever you want to do but don't forget to justify that because i want to do this why i have seen this because i want to do this because you know i have seen this okay you just need justification doesn't matter how you you know what in labor board i have been in examiner alhamdulillah you know couple of times so i had labor board's choice okay so we have been told you know every time that okay you have to look for these these things if a candidate is not saying those things doesn't matter if he or she has said almost everything but he or she hasn't you know said those uh, you know the buzz words so this is a clear fail this is not clear pass then i'm sorry okay so please don't get this false feeling that you know if i have managed if i have said you know so many uh, you know the guidelines into one labor room so i'm going to pass no you have to look at all patients okay you have to at least have a look at almost all rooms and then you are going to do it then you are going to prioritize it and allocate it allocate your you know the fellow colleagues okay clear everyone any question yes dr jay mm-hmm. can i ask you one question mm-hmm. please mm-hmm. yeah so uh, you know that uh, before explaining all uh, case so do you mm-hmm. think that we, we should tell that uh, yes before seeing the all case i have to see this patient uh, all patient that uh, group and say allergy and uh, jehova witness and mm-hmm. everything to come tell come on come on if at all it is written that you know she is a jehova witness in that case you can simply say why you want to prolong your labor board labor board itself is going to be so long if you want to prolong your case if you want to put yourself into trouble then it is your choice but otherwise it is not recommended okay go room yeah. by room stay simple you know look at all findings one by one and simply say that okay i'll do this i'll do this i'll do this i'll do this i'll allocate it i'll allocate it that's it this mm-hmm. is all what labor board is required okay labor board yeah. is not you know the hard and fast you know the kind of you know that uh, there is no hard and fast rule how you are going to manage any labor board but please don't unnecessarily get indulged in the information which is not required for you know the certain rooms right okay? otherwise if you would like to do you know anything there, there can be many things like you know the sadia said i will do you know the first peculum examination if the posterior pool of the lacer is you know the full this is going to be the p prom and this is going to be you know the case of the pre term labor then there, there, there will be so many things yeah so okay? sh- uh, is spread stored magnesium sulfate uh, you know the we have to tell the uh, pre term protocol or we have to mention all of these things if that if the examination magnesium. findings for example if examination findings are given she is 5 cm at the moment okay now you can see <laughs> now you can say that yes yeah. i will be doing i will be doing this okay in this case you can say i can see she is in advanced labor so i will advise my wife to give her magnesium sulfate according to the unit protocol Yeah. Assess and that it, first dose of the antidepressant uh, needs to be given. Yeah. So uh, another thing that you told that about the you know the mucinum stain which is fully. So mm-hmm. this one, do you think that we can say that after uh, three hours, if there is a CTG is an, an abnormal or she is imminent labor, so mm-hmm. uh, according to her conditions, she may go for instrumental delivery or um, uh, cesarean section. Depends on her condition. Otherwise, so you have sent uh, you have uh, sent midwife coordinator, isn't it? You have sent yeah, midwife. Midwife. yeah. So she will assess and she will tell you. Then you you can simply say that you know. then she will tell me that you know what exactly the situation is at the moment because at 7 centi- uh, at 7 o'clock you know she was fully dilated and she is on epidural as well 
So ideally, she has to be delivered by three hours. And meanwhile, I will manage the rest of the labor board. And then I will go and check myself that whether she has delivered or not. Simple. Yes. Stay simple. Yeah. Why do you want no. to bring... Not every yeah. meconium is dangerous. Not every yeah. meconium is bad. Okay, until yeah. unless any... If there is any concern. Okay, until yeah. unless if there is any concern with the heart rate. Until unless there is concern with, you know, the contractions or something. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So there are many vague uh, scenarios. So in that, uh, will the examiner they give some information or not? Like this preterm uh, labor, so it can go in any direction. Will they guide or just we need? I to... don't know. I don't think that it is vague. I don't think it is vague. You took it right. as a vague. She is here to doctor to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. She is complaining with abdominal pain. CTG is abnormal. She CTG is normal. So what is vague in this? Like she is, whether she is in the preterm labor or not, because so if you, will ask, labor, you will ask, all of, you will ask ST1 to go in the cis, isn't it? Okay, and then <laughs> or do you, you want to do everything? Also, because <laughs> that is a long I have management. given you one example. I have given you one example. For example, if it is given, so you, you can simply say, okay, let me let me put it this way. You can simply say, I will ask ST1 to go and assess this woman and take a brief history, review her record, and find out the cause of the preterm labor. If she is in true preterm labor, then the preterm labor uh, protocol will be initiated according to the human protocol. And according to the PV findings, then the magnesium sulfate uh, can be decided, okay? Because okay. according to the NICE guideline, 29 plus 6 is the magnesium sulfate, which you can give, okay? So in this case, yeah. if she, you will say, if she is in established labor, then yeah. I will suggest him to initiate the, or give the, a magnesium sulfate and also uh, you know the rule uh, and also give the first dose of the antibiotic steroid mm -hmm. okay yeah and gbs prophylaxis as well is it is it uh, i mean is it in the guideline yeah because he is in the established preterm labor so is it established yes, no, yes if, if, yeah if she is established only then we can generate all these things like magnesium sulfate and uh, the... Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I don't remember so many things. But I don't think that, you know, you have to bring so many things into one session. Okay, okay so most important. important. This, is going to be my, yeah. this is going to be my, you know, the advice in this labor board that you just need to be as simple as possible. Go one by room, one mm -hmm. by one. So take all these things one by one. Look carefully at the labor board that you're not missing anything. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ray, in one of the cases that the examiner, uh, the uh, midwife stitched the episiotomy and mm -hmm. the patient was Jehovah witness and she has the mm -hmm. 600 ml blood loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we put in the semi-urgent case and then he said that uh, her episiotomy is edematous and the uh, midwife is expecting a third degree uh, prenatal tear. Mm -hmm. So what you will do with this patient? Her mm -hmm. episiotomy is already suture. Mm -hmm. So informed consultant? Okay, inform consultant, take consent, repair in the theater, so many things. Then you will say about, if it is third degree perineal tear, so of course, this is beyond your capacity. You will inform okay. immediately your consultant. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just no. like this in the preeclampsia one, the, uh, it was a uh, high blood pressure at that time uh, when the, in the labor board. It was 150 by 110. But when uh, we put it on the urgent basis, he, he said case blood pressure is no normal, 120 by 80. You can simply ask. You can simply ask. Uh, you can simply say that can you have her current observation? If there are current observations, you know, examiner will tell you because your management is going to be depending upon the blood pressure. Okay. If he doesn't have any, so he will say, no, I don't have any current pressure. So then you will say that if her blood pressure is raised, I will do this if her blood pressure is normal. I will put her on monitoring. Simple. Like I said, mm -hmm. that you know, because it is you know the delivered case. So you will say that first of all, I would like to see that where is she placed at the moment? Is she in HTU? Is she in ICU? What are her current observation? Is she having any signs in terms of eclampsia? Because postpartum eclampsia is very common. I can see that seven hours have been elapsed and her baby is in NICU. I will inform midwife to inquire the NICU how baby is doing. Plus the further management of eclampsia will be depending upon her current observation. If her blood pressure is still high mm -hmm. enough, then she may need uh, antihypertensives along with magnesium sulfate as well. That's it. Plus, before giving this, I would like I would like to ask midwife to look at the, uh, you know, the bloods, her bloods, full blood count to look for the platelet count, especially the liver function test, urethritinine electrolyte, and coagulation profile. Mm -hmm. 
So when the in the post of patient they give the estimated blood loss, it means it's a intraoperative blood loss, not the current of course, blood loss. Of course, if she is bleeding, so they will give you that she is currently bleeding. So then it is going to be your priority. Any bleeding is priority. Okay. Okay. ST five can repair third degree. Yes, ST five can repair if ST five is signed off. Okay. So I don't think that we will get you know all these kind of things in here that you know he is signed off and he can repair. You know. So don't read in between the lines. Just, just stay simple, as simple as possible. Like I have, you know, just managed this uh, labor board. Okay. Excuse me, Dr. Sir. Dr. Mm -hmm. Sir, if it is severe PPH, so uh, it needs to tell uh, all of these things like call for hip, IV line, bloods, and everything. Of course, of course. So do you think? Do you think that uh, as a PPH protocol, uh, the mesopistol, sintocinone, everything will tell, but uh, need to tell about the dose and everything? No, no, no. No, 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 no. At least you have to say that, you know, I will do this, I will do this. I will, first of all, I would like to inquire about the causes of the PPH. I will ask midwife that the center has been completed or no. Uh, has she had, uh, was she on epidural? How was her delivery? Was it instrumental delivery? Was it cesarean section? This yeah. is how you are going to go. You are going to exclude causes and then you are going to manage the body. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. So I hope, you know, the things are quite clear. So just one advice again for the, you know, the labor board, just to stay simple, go room by room and don't unnecessarily get indulged into one case. Okay. Don't try to dig out you know, the information which is not necessary for that particular room and just be quick. Okay, be quick in your, uh, you know, the um, just having a view uh, room by room. Okay. Okay, that's great. So thank you so much, everyone. I will see you guys next Friday, hopefully. Okay. So thank you, thank you very am, much, Dr. Zep. Yeah, welcome, thank you welcome. so much, Dr. Zep. Thank I you. am taking, I am taking, you know, the mocks exams. So if anybody who wants to book any mock with me, so please, you know, you can consult with the team or you can ask me. All right. So, uh, because, you know, my mocks gets, gets quickly filled and this time, you know, I will hardly take, you know, the few mocks because of my, you know, the own commitment and because I have to travel to UK as well for exams. So maybe, you know, so that's why. Okay. So anybody who is interested, so please do talk to the team or me as well. <laughs> Inshallah, I will see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Prepare. Prepare well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.